am determined to rebuild the worst program in every single division of college football. And for the ACC, that is the Duke Blue Devils. Now, I know what you're thinking. You could make an argument for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, but according to College Football 25, Wake Forest is a two and a half star program, as is the Virginia Cavaliers, leaving the Duke Blue Devils as the sole two star program in the entire ACC. If that's not bad enough, in the ACC, we have four and a half star Clemson, three star Louisville, four star Miami, four star Florida State, and three and a half star NC State. 81 overall is not a bad starting point, but when your opponents are consistently better than you every single game, I think this is going to be a really difficult but really rewarding rebuild. Let's hop right into the Duke Blue Devils. I'm going to be Ray Parka, the level 25 program builder. Duke's record is honestly an absolute roller coaster. 04, 05, 06, and 07 have to be the most painful years to be a Duke football fan. I mean, oh my god, in 06, you went 0 for 12? 2013 was a solid season at 10 and 4. 2014, 2015, we're getting a bowl win. And these last years have actually been pretty solid. 2022 was 9 and 4. 2023 was 8 and 5. When I think of Duke, I think of basketball. But by the end of this rebuild, I hope you can think of football too. Of course, this rebuild does not end until we make a college football playoff push. Literally right out the gates, there's like six incredibly good players, risk of transfer. Same thing with Coach Prestige. That is not good. I'll be honest, I know nothing about Duke's roster. I know they had a nasty quarterback last year. The best player on this team is Jordan Moore, wide receiver. 89 speed, 92 excel. There's Chandler Rivers, a corner. Jalen Stinson, a corner. Malik Murphy is our quarterback. He's a 6'5 field general. 79 speed, 83 XL. The thing about Duke's offense is I have no idea what it does. So I can't even think about who I'm going to recruit yet. I got to watch this team play one game, determine if I want to keep the offense, and then think about it. Like certain offenses are incredible with a scrambling quarterback. And certain offenses are horrible with a scrambling quarterback. Malik Murphy is a sophomore with star dev traits. So he develops faster than normal. He's got a, oh my God, he's got an untapped ceiling too. He could get his accuracy and quickness all the way maxed and his throw power is virtually maxed already. Malik Murphy could actually end up being really, really good. Now I've talked about this on a lot of rebuilds, but make sure you check your players and see what their like ceiling is. For example, look at his elusiveness. You see those two grayed out squares? He can't go that high, right? But everything else, he actually has limitless potential. Let's compare that to a different guy so I can show you what I mean. So take a look at Eli Pankle here, just a wide receiver. So his route running hand elusiveness and power all have like a maximum right but his quickness could go all the way to the top so Eli Pankle could technically get 99 speed 99 acceleration the only problem is you can't choose what their skill points go into so it's always a really important thing before you start somebody make sure you check them out and ensure that they actually have a ceiling to reach all right yapping aside we got a 95 speed corner he is a senior so he'll be out of here along with Jordan Moore Malik Murphy being a sophomore is pretty nice got a senior halfback who's got 89 speed 92 excel he's all right. Not a lot of speed on this team. I was hoping we might have a speed demon wide receiver here or there. But take a look at freshman Jaden Moore. He's 5'8". He only needs one more point in quickness to go to 99 speed. But interestingly, as a 61 overall, this dude has gold tier shifty, which is actually crazy to have. I might just redshirt him. Yeah, he's only a freshman, right? Wide receiver room is really senior top heavy. Let's redshirt this dude, Jaden Moore. See if he gets good. Tight end's a sophomore, so that's good news. Offensive line is very mediocre. We only have one single 80 overall on the offensive line. Everybody else is below. D-line, very mediocre. We are going to have to fix that. D-line is so important in this game, dude. Linebackers are okay. I, I'm actually shocked this team is an 81 overall. It feels like we're consistently under that. Although the corners are really good. We have very solid corner room for our overall. Free safety is pitiful. I think I'm going to have to start someone else. This dude's a junior as a 72 overall. We might as well start one of these redshirt freshmen. See, this is a perfect example of why you need to check the players. Look at Chris Flowers. Now, on paper, paper, this guy actually looked pretty good. Red shirt freshman with good stats. He can hardly get that good. He can't get any faster. His hands can only go here. His pass coverage, power IQ, and run support. Even if you max this dude out, he's going to be like an 85 overall. That sucks. So you got to make sure you check that. On the other hand, here's Deshaun Stone. Absolutely bald as shit, but he can get significantly better. Strong safety is okay. So let me get in this depth chart. Make sure I got all the correct guys starting first and foremost. 
almost. I'm gonna start Deshaun Stone, and I'm gonna redshirt Jaden Moore, our gold tier shifty 61 overall. I'm not so certain that he'll actually get good. I have no way of really knowing, but um, I gotta throw that on him anyway, you know. All right, gentlemen, the year one schedule. Let's set a goal for this first year and figure out what we're gonna do here. FCS East, Northwestern, UConn, Middle Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia Tech. I'm not gonna lie, those first six games, you really can't ask for much better than that in the ACC. Then we take on Florida State, SMU, Miami, NC State will be an underdog in all of those games. And we close out with Virginia Tech, Wake Forest. Honestly, I feel like a six and six or even seven and five season is pretty realistic here. I wanna figure out how this offense works, what they're good at. And frankly, if Malik Murphy as a sophomore can have a really, really good season right now, I'd be super happy. He'll progress well into his junior year and then his senior. And we might be off to a hot start for the Blue Devils. Also for each season of the rebuild, I will try to do an overview of the recruits. I'm not gonna lie, I found recruiting very boring. So I don't like to sit here and nitpick every single time I do a specific action. If I sign a bunch of players, I can show you guys all that at once. Right now, I do wanna rebuild the offensive line though. The offensive line sucks on Duke. So I'm looking at a few two-star offensive linemen. Wouldn't hate a backup quarterback option for when Malik Murphy is out of here. We're about to lose our halfback, so I'm looking for halfbacks as well. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, we could virtually use every single position right now at Duke. So it's just looking for the best available players. Our season opener, you couldn't ask for a better matchup. The astronauts are a 68 overall. Season opener for the Duke Blue Devils. I think a huge goal for this season as well, we got to get to a two and a half star program. If we get to a two and a half star program, landing three stars, even four stars is feasible. But as a two star recruiting is not easy right now. So hopefully we string together a good season. We can bump that up and it starts here against FCS East. We'll start this game out with a couple field goals. Finally punching in a touchdown. Let's watch a drive though. I don't know anything about Duke's offense or how they run it. So on second and five, let's see what we're looking at. Malik Murphy, clean pocket. Nice little curl route. We're empty now on this drive. What do we got, Duke? What do we got? Malik Murphy, another laser over the middle. Malik Murphy has no touchdowns right now, but he's looking to get one. This could be a very nice start to the season. Look like Duke. Oh, laser. Damn, it looks like we passed the ball a lot. I'm very glad to see that. Although I guess we were in a two minute drill. There's Harvey taking in the touchdown, taking a 20 to three lead on FCS East. Honestly, you just can't get a big head about these games because if you lose to an FCS team, it's going to be a long season. Before this game is out, I do want to see one more. 27 to three, we're dominating the FCS East. This should probably be a handoff up the middle to our senior running back. It is. Jacquez Moore, 18 rushes, 111 yards. I wonder if Duke has a good run playbook or if the FCS East is just so bad that it's super easy. It's hard to say. Damn, Jacquez Moore is cooking though. Averaging about six yards per carry. Second to goal, looks like we're gonna hammer them one more time with the run, presumably here. It's like we have a lead fullback blocker, which is our tight end. All right, Duke, bunch of, bunch of nerds at Duke cooked up a pretty smart playbook. I can't say I'm shocked. Duke is gonna absolutely run away with this one. Defense is holding FCS East to just a field goal. It's a nice way to start the season. 34 to three, one and oh on the Duke Blue Devils rebuild, but uh, something tells me it's not gonna be this easy the whole time. Player of the game is Jacquez Moore, 127 rushing yards on 22 attempts, as well as a touchdown. He honestly deserves it. It's a very good game. Malik Murphy, 15 for 23 and a touchdown. The Duke Blue Devils were off to a really solid start. We picked up a win against Northwestern as well as a big win against UConn starting the season 3-0, continuing that streak to 4-0 after beating Middle Tennessee. But then we started to crumble a bit. A one-point loss to ranked North Carolina, an eight-point loss to Georgia Tech. I don't know why, but I always get smacked by Georgia Tech and Dynasties. Dude, they own me. Lost by a field goal to ranked Florida State, but we did pick up a win against SMU. So now it's week 10, taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Five and three is a nice record, but we're one and three in the ACC. So obviously that's not good. We're gonna have to pick up wins against our tough ACC opponents if we have any chance at going to the college football playoffs. But for now we're chilling. Uh, we've landed some solid recruits. Eric Gibbs and Redmond wanted to work on that offensive line. We got Kamani Antwin as well as Alan Booty. Nice. Hoping that either of these guys will be solid potential options. When I'm looking at quarterbacks, I'm looking at their dev trait and their ceiling. Continue to build that offensive line. We got Ja'Cory Kalamala which was that halfback option we were looking for. Derek Piscitelli. Honestly, I went very conservative on our recruiting this year 
here. I did pick up a three-star James Boyman speed rusher. I know I could be reaching for the stars every time going for three and four stars, but in this first season, I wanted to build a solid foundation of good two-star players. And hopefully if we're two and a half star next year, I can start shooting a lot higher. I've made the mistake in the past of trying to recruit just like giga four stars right out the gates, even as a low tier program. And what I end up doing is spending all this time and energy on these superstars only to get yoinked by a bigger program. And then I've wasted all those weeks, you know? Oh shit. Dude, at week 15, we literally just dropped four straight games. We knew the end of the season would be tough, but I didn't think it'd be that tough. We went one and seven in the ACC, five and seven to finish our first season. That is not good. Damn, it was looking really promising at the start of that season at five and three. So Malik Murphy's first season as a Blue Devil, 2,800 yards, 20 and seven. I don't know about Duke's offense. On the ground, 166 carries for 607 yards and eight touchdowns is actually a very, very good season for Jacquez Moore. Receiving Samir Hagen the junior had a thousand receiving yards and eight touchdowns. It's very good. Defensively, we're not applying a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. Wesley Williams, Aaron Hall, Kendi Charles, but we do get four interceptions for Chandler Rivers, three for Joshua Pickett. Let me look at the scheme and playbook. Our defensive playbook is a 4-3, which I do like. I do kind of want to keep that. And offensive is spread 4-3 multiple. Um, Yeah, I'm going to keep it. I think right now we're simply not good enough to compete in the ACC, but I think we can get there. Excuse me. Dude, one day I got to sit down with an EA dev and just just like figure out what determines things in this game. So we just went five and seven. We won one single ACC game. I am now a three-star program. I will not complain because that is super helpful for us. I just don't get how it happened. Shouldn't have as much issue landing big recruits this season. Let's take a look at the roster though, because I know we're going to take a hit. Malik Murphy now an 84 overall. He's got some abilities. Looking a little bit better than he looked last season, but not going to lie, not by much. He got a point in accuracy and maybe a point in IQ. Third best player being a kicker is never a good sign. I'm not gonna lie. Let me take a look at my wide receiver though. Where's my boy? All right, Jaden Moore. Oh, oh my God, I'm a genius. Jaden Moore, who I purposefully redshirted. Guess what, baby? In the off season, while redshirted, he maxed out his quickness. 99 speed, 99 acceleration. He's a 71, dude, he was a 61 overall when we redshirted. He went up 10 overalls. He still has four years of college eligibility. Oh shit, this guy's gonna be a demon. Not to mention we got Tim Nails with 95 speed, 91 excel we got some dogs out here oh malik is gonna be happy about this what a huge huge decision we just made all right i think we take Jaden moore i'm starting the sophomores and the freshmen it's not my best wide receiver group technically but i mean these guys are marginally better this dude's got 84 speed as a starting wide receiver bro you are in the wrong position you gotta be a tight end uh, and i gotta make sure that he's our slot wide receiver dude Jaden moore is set up for an absolutely massive season Go Old tier shifty as a freshman with 99 speed and 99 acceleration. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Schedule does look a little scary though. We start out with Texas Tech, Illinois, Tulane. Then it's Wake Forest, Virginia, NC State, North Carolina, Clemson, UConn, Georgia Tech, Syracuse, California. I mean, it's gonna look really similar to this every season. Uh, we just gotta find a way to beat some of these really good teams like Texas Tech. I am gonna step in and play this game because I would love to get a few reps with our 99 speed demon. Only a five overall disadvantage against Texas Tech. We did dip in overall, though. We were an 81 last season, a 78 now. It's going to take some time for recruiting to catch up and us to get our overalls back up where we want them. But I know we can do it. All right, the first moment they got me coming in to make a big stop. I'm third and five, but you got Texas Tech. Oh, is that wide receiver mid-screen? Oh, we dragged them forward. Unlucky. Looks like Texas Tech scored. I did not get a moment on offense, so we just got to come out here and make another third and four stop. Is it a run? It's not. It's a pass. Oh, yes, sir! Morris Jr., he just threw. That was a really questionable ball. I rarely ever see the CPU on Heisman throw that obvious of an interception. I'll take it, though. I'm not complaining, for the record. All right, it's seven to zero. They bringing me in on third and ten. I'm stepping up with Malik Murphy. We got to go for it. And he gets it. That's a crazy man. Dude, can I help you? Where is my dog wide receiver? Okay, so he's not in the game for some reason. I really hope he didn't get injured. That would be a nightmare. 
Damn, Malik Murphy goes down. Looks like we're gonna have to settle for a field goal on this one. I am so confused though. Where's my, where's my dude? Third and six. I'm about to say that looks so open. We get a huge hit on him. I need to go, I need to look at my depth chart. Where's my boy? Okay, he's not injured. He's completely in. So why is he not in the game? Let's just make him the starter. All right, boys, three to 14. And finally, Jaden Moore is actually in. He's my wide receiver one now. I don't know why um they didn't want him coming in before, but I'm gonna try to throw to him right here. It's caught. That was gross. That's his first catch of the day. I'm gonna motion him down. I mean, he's so fast, right? I feel like we could get away with a lot here. I'm gonna give him a zig and let's hope that this is man coverage. Zig out of the 99 speed. Oh, Malik Murphy, I couldn't even get it off. There's Jay. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Dude, I don't even have time to throw a slant. That's crazy. Hey, like I said, we got to work on that offensive line and that's clearly showing up right now. Not only that, but it was a fumble for six. That could not have gone worse. All right, three to 21. I am given an opportunity here. See if we can make something out of it. Ooh, look at that. They're going to leave the speed demon. With that gold tier shifty, he does move so fast. Now in the red zone, we'll get an opportunity to score a touchdown here. I'd be interested if they tried that same defense. Oh my God, they do. What are you doing? That's too easy. Jaden Moore, the first touchdown of his college football career. And I I think he's gonna have one hell of a college football career. In fact, it's first and goal again on my next moment, and I swear they're in the same- oh, they're not in the same defense. But they do leave our tight end, who's gonna fight forward to the five. We're looking pretty good right now, gentlemen. All right, let's try and use Jaden Moore's legs to our advantage. Let's send him on a drag here. Oh my god. I mean, that's just pitiful. We're blocking five people against four, and Brandon Jordan comes through literally untouched. How do we how do we have such a breakdown on the offensive line like that? Third and goal, in a little bit of trouble now. Oh, that's good blocks. I'm stepping up with Malik Murphy. I'm getting sketchy. It's fourth and goal on the two. Gotta make a massive play here. Ooh, this is scary. I'm gonna block Hasley, and I'm gonna give Jaden Moore an out route. I'm hoping that's man coverage. Fourth and goal, huge play. Malik Murphy. Malik Murphy! He is kind of sneaky athletic. 79 speed never looks so fast. This game is legitimately winnable. Oh my God, our defense is coming up huge though. Defense just got another stop. It's third and five, 16 to 21. And offensive line is not coming up huge. That was bad too. They played such good defense on that. Still 16 to 21. Texas Tech is punting. And guess who our punt returner is? None other than Jaden Moore. 99 speed, 99 excel. Holy shit, could you guys block a little worse, please? Send me to the hospital over here. All right, first and 10. I'm gonna take the check down here. This is our fullback, which I think is our backup tight end, but that's a big boy. Ooh, big mistake, Texas Tech. Is that single coverage, press coverage? On Jaden, dude, it is insane how badly this offensive line is getting blown up. To the degree that I can't throw standard passes. I have to get this thing out so quick. Third and seven, just anything. Texas Tech is killing us right now. Fourth and seven, this is for the ball game right here. Can't make this, it's all she wrote. Can't even call the audibles, the stadium pulse is getting me too bad. Fourth and seven, need a massive play. Oh, Jaden Moore? Oh, that's a great play by the safety. I did not see him flying down. The game is not quite over. It's third and 12, they have a five point lead and this is probably a run play. So, so long as we stop it, they're gonna make this an eight point game. This game is not over. All right, gentlemen, first and 10. Oh my God, they missed the field goal. I think they missed the field goal. All right, we're gonna run the football because I'm sick of throwing it. And I just air trucked my way to the two. Wait a minute. Are we gonna win this game? This would be a massive win to start this season. Dude, I, I gotta give credit to defense. Defense stepped up so big today. I wasn't that effective on offense. Couple good plays here and there, but first and goal, we're gonna go with another run and I literally could have scored that so easily, but I don't want to. I can't give I can't give them time to win this game. Second and goal under 20 seconds. If we can punch it in. Dude, look at the O-line on the run blocks though. Pass blocking? We're a junior varsity team. Run blocking. We're looking like the Niners. That's the sophomore Karan Boyd. 17 seconds left. We're up by. Yup, we went for two and got it. We're up by three points. Let's play deep. I'm on Morris Jr., who's got an interception already. They're gonna throw the out route, which would have been good, but he didn't get all the way out of bounds. So now we're talking. Second and two, clock is not ticking. They have two timeouts remaining. Oh, where are you going, Texas Tech? Another interception. Holy shit. Duke comes out on top, 24 to 21. It's our first win against a ranked opponent. Player of the game is Malik Murphy, 281 passing yards and two total touchdowns. One on the ground and one to the freshman. That's a hell of a start to the season, gentlemen. Let's see if we can keep it up. Well, presumably year two went well because we have a bowl game. The Direct TV Holiday Bowl, we're taking on Penn State though. Was that a really good season? Eight and four, five. 
five and three in the ACC. We beat Cal. We lost to Syracuse. Beat Georgia Tech. Thank you. We beat UConn. We got shit on by Clemson. Yikes. Yeah, I think Clemson is like truly going to be the most difficult team to beat. Barely beat North Carolina. 41 to zero against NC State. Yikes. Okay, so we beat a lot of teams, but our losses were horrendous. And honestly, this Penn State game might be similar. Now, a quick update on scouting. Becoming a three-star program was such a huge jump. Um, We landed one three-star last year. This year, we got multiple four-stars. Sony Fiala, four-star free safety. We got a four-star outside linebacker, Jimmy Floyd. Uh, Three-star D-tackle, Corey Gaines. Three-star free safety, Colt Washington. Four-star wide receiver, Boudreaux. I didn't finish his scouting, but he looks really fast, and he's 6'1". I think this dude could be a stud. Working right now on Jamil Cordova, five-star wide receiver. I don't think it's in the cards, but we'll see. Carl Teague, a three-star. Working on a four-star right guard. As you can tell, significantly better recruiting season because of that three-star. Certainly helps that we won games, and I don't expect this to go well. 78 overall, taking on an 89. We are most likely going to get absolutely smacked, but we did make a bowl game in our second year, so that's pretty cool. The Direct TV Holiday Bowl is a gloomy, rainy day. God, dude, if we pull this out against Penn State, I'll be big-time shocked. It's 13 to 10, 20 to 17. This game is like, ah, it was winnable there for a second. I think it might be out of reach at this point. Dude, we put up a much better fight than I thought we were going to, though. 30 to 48, Penn State, pretty massive overall advantage. Catches the dub, but... Duke is shockingly good. I'm really enjoying this rebuild so far. Drew, oh my God, look at that. 341, 91% completion, six touchdowns is disgusting. In a rain game, jeez. All right, no bowl game win, but the Duke Blue Devils finish 2025 season, eight and five, and a lot of really solid recruits. Malik Murphy had a significantly better season. I'm glad we didn't switch the offense. He's still not throwing a good completion percentage, but 3,200 yards, 27 and 11, big improvement. Uh, Ron Boyd wants to transfer. I can't say I'm super upset. I mean, he did have a good season, but it's not hard to get good halfbacks in, to be honest. So well, he's replaceable. Jaden Moore was wide receiver one, as well as slot wide receiver. It just looks like this offense distributes the football super evenly. Like I was really trying to force feed Jaden Moore and it just isn't possible. Good stats though, all around. Still not getting the quarterback very well. I have to recruit a super strong edge rusher. I think that's going to be really important. Defense played solid. Um, Chandler River as a senior, 87 overall. I'm one of the highest players on this team. Overall, a really good season for Duke. We only have one year left with Malik Murphy, though. So uh, in this next season, I kind of need to overview my quarterback options. All right, 2026. As always, we got a tough schedule. Nebraska's fifth in the nation. Oh, we're ranked 25th. We're ranked 25th in the nation. And we're back to an 81 overall, and we're a three and a half star program. This is the best rebuild I've done ever so far. Through two years, this is the best rebuild. But we're just getting started. I have a feeling. My recruiting board is filled with monsters. We're a three and a half star program now. We can go after the big boys. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because this is the final season with our senior quarterback, Malik Murphy. He's the best player on the team right now, which is also a good thing. I like when my quarterback's best player on the team. Malik Murphy, 87 overall. He's got abilities. He's a senior. Damn, he is looking really good. He maxed out his power, which is bizarre. I guess he's got a cannon now for Jaden Moore. Next best is Musa Kane with 99 Excel. Corners are still incredible on this team. 383 overall corners and 83 free safety. The Chad Bayer turned out to be a good decision. Oh my God. Jaden Moore transferred. I forgot about that. I don't think I showed it to you guys. I tried to convince him to stay. He did not stay. Damn. Well, losing him is a huge hit. Tim Nails is fast, but I don't know how I feel about this whole wide receiver room, dude. I'm about to redshirt some dudes. I'm going to redshirt Vince Hicks and Tim Nails. All right. Tim Nails, Vince Hicks. Tim Nails got 95 speed. Vince Hicks got 94, 95 Excel. So going to give those guys the red shirt and and I got to figure out who's our quarterback after Malik Murphy. Grayson Loftus is a junior. We could get one year out of him. These guys suck. I mean, they just suck. We got to recruit a good quarterback this year. It's going to be crucial. I am going to redshirt both of these guys, though, just in case we have to use them. All right, gentlemen, it is senior season for Malik Murphy. 87 overall now. Don't think we're going to the playoffs, but, dude, we're consistently moving our team's prestige up. Three and a half star program. 
after two years is insane. All we need is a non-losing season. Year three, slight regression, but not by much. We did perform significantly worse in the ACC, three and five in the ACC, but a seven and five season, maybe a bowl game in our future and some really solid recruits. We landed, and this was probably the most important part, Javier Camelet, brother to our halfback, I guess, same last name, five-star scrambler quarterback. Dude looks like an absolute monster and he's got platinum tier option king. I'm gonna have to switch Duke's offense around this five-star monster. We got a four-star left and a four-star right tackle, two four-star tight ends, considering maybe moving one of these guys to wide receiver, depending on how fast they are. Three-star middle linebacker, a few more three-stars here and there. Um, nobody else notable, but the five-star quarterback was the massive signing of this season. Um, and it helps him with seven to five. Not sure we would have landed him if we didn't win a few games there. Malik Murphy's final season, 38 and five touchdown interception is crazy good. He's an 89 overall and he goes for 3,300 yards. That's really solid for him. Travis Bates, our new running back, uh, really not an impressive season by any means. And as you can see, Malik Murphy, 46 carries, 173 yards. We absolutely need an offensive playbook that will get my quarterback involved. He's so fast. We got to have something where he's running like crazy. I'm actually going to skim through like Florida Atlantic. This guy's running. All right. I'm going to make the change right now. We have a brand new quarterback for the first time on Duke. I'm not going to run Duke spread. I'm going to try out Ole Miss's spread offense. I've heard that this is good for scrambling quarterbacks. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm also going to tune my offensive and defensive aggressiveness to 60. And my adaptive AI is going to be aggressive. I do want to check though. Like how did Ole Miss's quarterback? Honestly, Oregon's playbook looks like their quarterback moves around a lot. I actually take it back. I'm going to switch to Oregon's playbook. Honestly, there's just so many playbooks in this game. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around it, but uh, this is going to be a really big season. Damn. Preseason of 2027, we're in 85 overall. We have made leaps and bounds since starting this. Honestly, the number one reason is we went from a two-star to a three-star in season one, which by the way, made no sense. The big thing, the big question right now is the quarterback room. We got to see how how good Javier Comalette is insane. This actually, unironically, might be the best quarterback I've ever recruited. Javier Kamalet in his freshman season is a 78 overall. He is unbelievably good. All right, we gotta view his player card because this is super important, damn. I was hoping his dev tree would be elite. It's not, it's still star. So he develops faster than an impact. He's a six foot three scrambler. I will say as a scrambler, he's not that fast right now, but his quickness has maximum potential. His accuracy has maximum potential. He could be a 99 speed quarterback with 99 throw accuracies. This is one of the best quarterback prospects I've ever had. I'm gonna redshirt him and basically concede this year because Javier Comalette is the future of this program. And I want him to be as ready as humanly possible when he steps foot as the starter. The fear is playing not so well this year. We did get a Juco. Uh, halfback in the transfer portal, Marquise Collins, 86 overall, 94 speed, 95 excels, a very fast running back. Wide receivers, Tim Nails is now a 81 overall sophomore, but 95 speed, so the red shirt was a good call there. Hicks looks okay, James Jennings looks okay, tight ends look mediocre. The offensive line is getting significantly better. Take a look at this. Got an 87 left tackle, an 84 left guard, 86 center, 78 right guard, and 81 right tackle. We fully revamped that offensive line. Defense is looking really solid too. A lot of good seniors. Makes me kind of want to start Calmelette right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to redshirt him. The dude is a 78 overall as a freshman. He's got platinum tier option king as a freshman. That's ridiculous. I think as far as recruiting is concerned, we have a lot of corners that we need to replace. Maybe another star wide receiver for Cal Millette since he won't start till next year, keeping the O-line strong. But one thing's for certain, we have our quarterback for the next four years. Let's just try not to drop too many games this season. Luckily, the first two games of the season were really easy. We have Notre Dame, who's going to be tough. Miami, NC State, Stanford, and Pittsburgh. We actually dodged Clemson this year. Should be a solid season. Even without starting Cal Millette, this was a huge season. I didn't show any games this season because I wanted to breeze right through it, but we went 10 and 4. Does that mean we went to the... Were we in the playoffs? No, we were not in the playoffs. Dude, look at this this playoff bracket. Have you ever seen a playoff bracket look like this? Sam Houston, Arkansas, Kansas State, Washington, Texas, USC, Georgia, Washington State. That is wicked. The natty was USC, Washington, USC one. I don't get how I was 10 and four. Shouldn't it be a 12 game regular season and a bowl game? It was an awesome season. I mean, 10, a 10 win season. What am I missing here? Oh, we had the Birmingham bowl against Arkansas State and we smacked them 31 to 13. Oh, we also had an ACC championship. I am so sorry, guys. I thought this season was going to be a wash. I was just 
just waiting to get Cal Millet in. We played amazing. I mean, we didn't win a natty, so it's whatever. We didn't even go to the playoffs, and we didn't win the ACC championship. But let's take a look at the season stats. Must have been a huge season. So Grayson Loftus, the guy who's kind of just in until Cal Millet's in, 4,000 yards. 34 and 8. That's so impressive. Uh, Marquise Collins, one of the best running backs and fastest we've ever had, put up a very, I mean, that's a ton of carries, though. But he got 837 yards and 14 touchdowns. Jesus. Spencer Jones with 1,010. Tim Nails with 765 and 12. Defensively, a ton of interceptions. Musa Kane, Kamari Robinson, sadly, all these guys are gone. Those are all seniors you're looking at. Chris Flowers, Platinum Tier House Call is now off our squad. But hey, look at the sack numbers. For once, we have a double-digit sack guy. Kobe Smith, only a junior. Wait a minute, Kobe Smith? This dude is crazy good. Oh my God, he is 95 Excel, 86 speed as an edge rusher. He can still go higher and he has platinum tier quick jump. Quicker jump off the snap when pass rushing. That's crazy. Kobe Smith is going to take over next season. All right, well, a spectacular season, way better than I imagined. Let's pay a little more attention here as this will be the first season that Javier Calmelet is starting. Damn, we are coming into 2028 ranked 11 in the nation. This is absolutely one of the best rebuilds we've ever done. A, a lot of the success coming from the fact that we randomly became a three and a half star. Adrian Pounds. I mean, what an elite name to have. Can you imagine if my last name was Pounds? Matt Pounds. Matt Pounds, your mother. Matt Pounds, your father. Matt Pounds, your sister. Matt Pounds, your daughter. Okay. 2028 roster. How did the red shirt work for Javier Kamalet? Let's find out. Now, this roster's got a 90 overall left guard, Trent Boykins, 89 center. Dude, we got this offensive line so much better. Take a look at Dylan Kaufman here, who's almost fully maxed out, almost at his top potential. Platinum tier, grounded pound. Run block wins, fatigue defender. Some of these abilities I've honestly never seen, so it's really cool to see him. Oh, uh, we got a 98 speed, 99 Excel senior corner, Javel Jenkins. The offseason treated him very well. And Kamalette, very interestingly, the redshirt season does not improve his overall at all, but he does get gold tier extender and silver tier off platform, so his abilities got better. It must be the case that all of his skill points went directly into his physical abilities. It looks like he might have gotten a little bit of health, but that didn't improve his overall at all, which, I mean, kind of makes sense. Keep in mind, Kamalette is a scrambler. He's only at 86 speed, 89 Excel right now, so our best case scenario is he starts dumping some points into quickness. Halfback is the worst it's ever looked for us on Duke. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think I'm probably gonna start Javier Borrell. Gold tier recoup, he's a freshman receiving back. Although sadly, his quickness is maxed out. He does have a lot of room for improvement elsewhere. It's just a really bad running back room for Duke right now. Same can't be said for wide receivers. Wide receivers are looking really, really nice. We've got Jeremiah Davis, a 98 speed freshman, six foot three. So I got to get him in the mech soon or red shirt him. But right now, I do like how this roster is looking. One of the best tight ends we've ever had, Max Lee with 85 speed, 81 excel. And defensively, we honestly have dogs everywhere. Even our middle linebacker, Bradley Henson, only a 77 overall, but he's a freshman with 91 speed, 88 excel. It's just an unbelievably nasty Duke team. Oh my god, our season openers against Texas? Are you kidding? Holy shit. All right, it's been a minute since I've played. So let's hop in, baby. We got Javier Kamala. One of the best young quarterbacks in the entire nation, the five-star scrambler, who already has a gold-tier extender, platinum-tier magician. We're rocking Oregon's offensive playbook, and we're ready to play some ball. The Blue Devils, led by the redshirt freshman, Cal Millette. Honestly, Duke saw a lot of success behind Malik Murphy, and then one incredible season out of Grayson Loftus. We were doing so much with, you know, technically so little. I think we need to keep that up. On third and two here, look to just pick up an easy one and there's our tight end one of the best tight ends dukes had in a hot minute and the next moment we'll play is a stop on third down unfortunately it's seven to zero and owens the quarterback for texas not ewers but owens Benson's on everything. That was excellent defense. Bradley Benson, 91 speed freshman. A lot of really good freshmen on Duke right now. Third and seven once again. I'm not getting any moments on offense, unfortunately. Looks like we just got to make something happen here. That's really good defense. Hopefully a holding and a massive hit. No, it's a defensive holding. It's a roughing the passer. Yikes. First and goal. Gonna try and keep Texas out the end zone here. I'm going on Ollie. Player lock. I expect a run here out of Texas. Jet sweep. 
Turn the corner. Nice tackle. I'm going to stay on player lock. I think it's so fun in the goal line. Second goal, another handoff. There it is. Ooh. Did I make that tackle? I have no idea what just happened. I'm just going to be straight up. Ooh, third and goal. Five wide. I can't. I got to see. Third and goal. Sketchy ball. Almost intercepted. Texas takes their field goal. It's 13 to zero. I finally get to take over with Kalmalet here. Tim Nails is really fast. I don't know if he can burn the Texas DB. That guy's huge. Damn. I tried to risk it. I saw the single coverage, but that Texas DB was not messing around. That was great defense and a risky pass there. Still 13 to zero. We were down 19 to zero against Texas Tech when we won that football game. So it ain't over till it's over. That's all I'm saying. Bradley Henson. This dude is a beast. It's so rare that I have like a 91 speed middle linebacker. It's so fun to have. Third and three. I tell you what, our defense doing a great job stopping Texas. We just can't get anything on offense right now. Third and three. Big blitz. That's got to be a holding. It's got to be a holding on Texas. But guess what? We can decline this. because This will be fourth and two. And we'll force a field goal. Yep. Oh my goodness. Texas is going for this. Fourth and two. A handoff. And they're stuffed. Texas can't get through Duke's D-line. And we fumbled? I don't know what just happened. All right. Well, wow. We did all that. Texas still scored. Sad days. Kamalette is cold. I do not like to see that. I'm going to step up with Kalmalet and go down. He's a scrambler that just doesn't have scrambler legs quite yet, you know? Second and 10. That's an easy, easy throw. I love seeing that on a defense. Kalmalet, no touchdowns, two interceptions. Yikes, buddy. Hey, he's only a freshman. Cut, cut the guy some slack. Quick pass into Lee is body by that safety. Play action, double post. I really do like this play. Let's see if Boudreaux is there. Oh, he actually is, except... Oh, Kalmalet! Gold tier extender breaks the sack. Sadly, I didn't see downfield quick enough. I thought I was sacked. I'm so, I'm so not used to sitting up through that. Cal Millette's got a lot of room if he wants it, but we also have a playmaker. What a ball! Boudreaux drops it. Oh, that hurts. That was such a sick play. Fourth and 10. Big play. I'm looking for the window. That is the third drop past that drive. Those were tight windows. But damn, I was hoping we'd come down with at least something. First and 10. Still 20 to 0. I know Tim Nails is fast. Oh my God, Tim Nails got him that time. He got him that time. And he comes down with the catch. That's what I've been looking for. Tim Nails, a huge catch. He's tough as nails, baby. First and 10, right in the middle. They're going to leave Boudreaux. Now second and three. I'm going to roll out right Calmelette. That is... Mm, I think we run this football. We can run this football here because we know that we're going for it. And look at that. Three star offensive linemen on the left side. You got to love to see that. Nick Berryman can't get through the linebacker. But a huge hole opened up. And look at this offensive line. Dude, we got multiple... 88, 87, and 90 overall on the left side of that line. Making things real easy for Duke. Looks like our Sim offense gets a touchdown. It's 20 to 14 in the third quarter. Ooh, that's play action. And he throws a... Oh, very nice play. Looks like I'm not getting any moments. Okay, I get a moment here. Can't really tell what's going on. It is 35 to 21 the next time I get to take over. It's third and 10, too. I do not like this. I'm going to go Boudreaux here. Who makes a huge catch? Huge catch. Now we find ourselves in the red zone. I'm going to go back to the handoffs. I mean, that offensive line was just unbelievable in the red zone last time. And look at them right here. Oh, I tried to sneak behind him, but I should have just should have just gone around. Regardless, second and goal, I think we'll be able to get this in here. Uh-oh, center got bullied, but he gets the pass off. Oh my God, I cannot believe he connected on that. I did lose a yard though, so I can't say it's the smartest play ever. Third and goal. Big, big play here. They're going to leave the hat back in the middle. Missed pass, Kalmalet. Oh no. Oh, this is so bad. Fourth and goal. Need a really big play now. Stepping up, Kalmalet. He's a scrambler. Kalmalet keeps this game alive huge touchdown if defense can't make a stop it's over oh they don't i mean it's not technically over but texas scored so fast that is not good and that pass rush is crazy calmalette 427 three touchdowns four interceptions four not what you want to see and that'll make it five because i thought that route was something completely different i thought that was a dig i am not helping out duke right now not at all dude texas is scoring like in seconds too every time they get the ball it's like a one play tutty i'm able to step up with cal Millett, and that is technically a throwable ball holy shit what a rocket on the run moving left good lord that was beautiful it's throws like that where you remember that this is one of the best young quarterbacks in the nation oh i had a 
But you know what? I got the hat back too. Good lord, I'm about to break a Duke record for passing yards in a game, but I'm also gonna have the Duke record for interceptions in a game. I'm gonna hit this wheel route for a beautiful first down. And now on first and goal, what can we find? This time, we actually will connect on that pass. And that's a touchdown. It's onside kick time, gentlemen. If we can get this onside kick, we can beat Texas. It's possible. Damn. Insta-fielded. Yep, third and 12 victory formation for Texas. Honestly, one hell of a fight against a great team, but just not enough. And honestly, Cal Millette in the sim through three interceptions. We just got to get his overall up. He's still developing. This is his first game as a college football player. Last football that Cal Millette played was in high school. It's actually a disgusting stat line though. 27 for 45, 502, three touchdowns, five interceptions. That's a Jameis Winston stat line. Um, On the ground, Cal Millette was nine for 24 and a touchdown. Berryman sucked. He sucked ass. Like I said though, it's the worst, you know, running back room. Sean Boudreaux had an absurd game. 14 receptions for 280 yards and a touchdown. That's gross. Kamalat's first year as a starter was a winning season, seven and five, although a 500 record in the ACC is certainly not sending us back to the ACC championship like last season, but hey, this kid's a stud. He's got a lot of time to improve. Uh, the sad news is we are losing. I mean, look at how insanely good our seniors are this season. We're losing about 10 different guys who are 84 overall or higher, and a lot of them are on our offensive line. Kamalette ends the season as an 81 overall. He throws 34 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Is mediocre. 230, 355. Is he scrambling? Hell yes. I mean, 102 carries is a lot. Obviously, he's not 99 speed yet. Uh, and guess what? On those 102 carries, zero fumbles, six broken tackles. I really like to see that. Berriman, I hate this dude. We have to get a better running back, though. Like, I miss Marquise. Sean Boudreau had a ridiculous, unbelievably ridiculous season. 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns his senior year should be a really, really good one. That's Oregon playbook for you. Um, should be a really good season of off-season training. Players usually come back significantly better, so I'm hoping we can see Cal Millette get a significant upgrade. I think his junior and senior year should be a college football playoff push. Apologies, gentlemen. I haven't been as locked in on showing recruiting as I should have been. Big target right now. I need a halfback. I was talking about how easy it would be to just get in a sub, nice halfback in the transfer portal or something. It's actually been difficult. Uh, we've got Devin Sanders, not Deion Sanders. Sanders, but D. Dot Sanders half back. Dude looks like a beast. 92 Excel right now. Uh, Tyler Amaro looks really good too. Looking at multiple four stars. I'd love to pick up one of these guys and I'll check back in once we've signed a notable amount of guys. But for now, it's 2029 and it's the sophomore season for Cal Millett. And you know what's kind of crazy? I grabbed this Juco guy, Jamerson Blanco. He's actually really good. I just can't justify Cal Millett not getting reps. So I have to continue to have Cal Millett be the starter. But dude looks pretty good. Would have been a nice option if we needed him. Kamalette's an 83 overall now. It looks like his agility and change of direction went up along with some of his accuracies, but not by much. He still looks just all right. Javier Borrell is looking a lot better though. He's a sophomore now with 90 speed, 91 excel. Much better than Behrman. Jeremiah Davis, 98 speed, 94 excel. Tim Nail still 95, 91. And Vince Hicks is wide receiver one now as a senior. Remember, we redshirted him with Tim Nails, which ended up being a great call because now both as seniors are some of our best wide receivers. Excited to see these guys go off. Max Lee going into his junior year. A great tight end. And Ty Simonson, a great backup option as well. So a lot of good receiving threats. We did lose some considerable O-line strength. Some of those seniors were just so good. But um, probably the best middle linebackers we've ever had. Alex Cherry, Bradley Henson. So much speed at the linebacker group for this team. Corners continue to be really solid. And uh, strong safety is the weakest it's ever been. We've always had good strong safeties. Right now, Anton Ezekiel. 74 overall senior. That is a horror it actually. We got to get on that. We have to recruit a strong safety this year. Well, we couldn't pick up a win against Texas in the season opener last season, but I think we can do it here against Western Kentucky. Why don't we watch on Sim as hopefully the Blue Devils start out 1-0. and oh. All right, second and 10 for the Duke Blue Devils. Camelette handoff to Javier Borrell. Who's going to take that for a good 10 yards? Not bad. Now third and inches should be an easy pickup as we approach the red zone. Borrell Ooh, a spin and a hurdle. Calm and composed against Western Kentucky. Cal Millette surveys the field, throws the check down. Take a good eight yards. Cal Millette, don't forget how fast you are, buddy. Although, frankly, we could probably just hand this ball off. 
And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Borel gets a little stuck. We're down to the one. Looking like Javier Borel. Oh, we got the fullback in. We are in I formation power. Borel up the gut. That was a disgusting juke. And that was not Borel. We brought in the backup for that. That might have been Barry. Oh, it's Shepley. I was about to say, that juke looked a little faster than anything Javier Borel is capable of. But hey, it's a 7-0 start for Duke. Honestly, Western Kentucky putting up an impressive fight here. But in the red zone, 26-14. to We can cap this game off with a Borel touchdown. Duke running backs were absolutely taking over today. That's what happens when you build a nice offensive line. And that's a 1-0 start to the season. Not gonna lie, it wasn't pretty. Western Kentucky is not that good. But it's 21-33. Running backs were dominant. The player of the game, Javier Borel. That is a lot of carries for 100 yards. But he did get in the end zone. We'll give it to him. He's only a sophomore. Peter Ricard, ACC Defensive Player of the Week. Nice. Sophomore season. Wow, deja vu anyone? Seven and five. Four and four. The exact same record. Now, I will say I'm really excited about recruiting them. We got Kerry Colombo, deep threat wide receiver. We got Amaro, one of the hatbacks we were looking at, as well as Steven Jasmine. We couldn't get Devin Sanders. I am pretty sad about that. We do have a four star running back. Kept the offensive line strong. I did lose a four star to South Carolina, but overall, ton of good four star commits. We're trying to keep uh, Cal Millet happy, and let's see how this sophomore season went. Slow and steady wins the race, Cal Millet. He really didn't throw the ball that much. On Oregon offense, is kind of crazy. 2,900 yards, 21 and 6. It's a good uh, TD interception ratio, though. Borrell was significantly better than Berryman, but damn, we're kind of fumble prone. So, with the fumbles, gentlemen, three? Cal Millet had 447 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. I love to see that. Uh, and then a very mediocre wide receiver season for us. A big regression from last season. We were a lot more potent on offense before. Five interceptions out of Anton Ezekiel. This was a weird season. I'm not going to lie. I expected a much better season here. Bro, what? 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 One of the tight ends I recruited, Desmond Steed, he's an 88 overall as a freshman. How did this happen? Four-star blocking tight end isn't... This dude is maxed out. He's maxed out as a freshman. Does that mean that every skill points he gets will go into a physical ability? The crazy thing is he can't even hardly get any of these. Dude, what? This is like the craziest blocking tight end prospect I've ever seen. And all he can do is put one more point in blocking. Honestly, kind of a shame. Well, Henson as a junior is looking incredible now. Fiala looks really, really good too with Platinum Tier House Call. Javier Burrell is an 87 overall now. And Kamalette as a junior. 85 overall, 86 speed, 90 excel. His accuracies are better now too. I was really hoping at this point he would have put points in quickness, but his elusiveness is maxed out. His accuracy is getting better. His IQ is maxed out. Yeah, he's getting better. Three and a half star program. We're looking for a good season here for sure. The 2030 Heisman, Trevor Uzama. 4,000 yards, 48 touchdowns, eight interceptions on LSU. Holy shit. I, I tried to sim to the bowl game to play the bowl game. There's no way we have a bowl game. We're in the college football playoffs. Oh my God. Are we in Heisman voting? Tell me Cal Millet's in here. No, he's not. That would have been sick. Whoa, what did we do this season? Honestly, I was gearing up for senior season Cal Millet to potentially make a run, but it looks like we might have a run right now. Conference championship was Duke Miami. We shit on Miami, 27 to three. In week 14, we played Miami. Oh my God, so we played Miami back to back. Damn, eight and five Miami was the ACC championship? So Miami had to get railroaded by us twice. We beat Georgia Tech. We lost to NC State. We crushed. Wake Forest. We crushed Florida State. We crushed SMU. We lost to North Carolina. So our two losses of the season came to North Carolina and NC State. Beating Miami back-to-back -back gives us an ACC championship win. I think that means we have a bye in the college football playoffs. It does. Oh my god, dude. Some of these brackets are so crazy. Look at this. Georgia Southern has a bye. LSU naturally does have a bye. They got the Heisman. Iowa has a bye. Duke has a bye. So we are facing either Texas or USC, my most recent big loss was to Texas. So I'm kind of scared that Texas wins that game. Michigan, Oregon are going to play Iowa. So no matter what, it's going to be a gauntlet. We're going to have to take on either Texas or USC and then either Michigan, Oregon or Iowa. And then the national championship could be Rice, Tulane, Georgia, Wisconsin, Georgia, Southern, LSU.
Bro. Yeah, we are not on the fun side of this bracket. I would love to be playing Rice right now. Well, damn. I mean, Javier Calmelet must have had a monster season. I mean, it was a good season. I wouldn't call it monster. 2,800 yards, 27 and 7, 68% completion. Oh my God. God, Javier Borrell as a junior is a dog. No fumbles, nine touchdowns, almost a thousand yards, five yards per carry. Cal Millette punched in five as well. Tyler Amaro, the backup, had five. Jesus. Sheen at 818, Jeremiah Davis. Honestly, we hardly pass the ball at all. It's so weird. After switching my offensive playbook to Oregon, I swear we run the ball better and pass less, which is exactly the opposite of what I thought I was going to be doing when I switched to Oregon. It's working out really well, though. I have absolutely no complaints. We are going to the college football playoffs. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? Not oh, no. Oh, yes. I can get redemption. The Verbo Fiesta Bowl, the college football playoff quarterfinal against Texas. I, re I do want redemption. Last time we played Texas, Texas, we lost 45 to 35, but this time around, we've got a better roster. Last time we played them, Kamalette was a freshman. We're an 81 overall, they're an 86. I'm gonna play the moments on this game, but I don't wanna play the moments on the entire college football playoffs. I definitely want the Sim team to pull up and ball out, so I'll try and find moments where I can play and moments where I can watch. This is an absolutely massive game. I want redemption on Texas so bad. Last time we played them was really frustrating. I cannot believe believe that I can't believe that we are in the college football playoffs right now. I thought it would be next season. A lot of star wide receivers. A lot of studs out here. I'm gonna take two yards on the opening throw. I gotta be slow and steady. Simonson, Steed, Borrell, there are so many good players out here to throw to. Double team on the left side is beautiful. We are gonna stop and pop to Ty Simonson. Huge. We got Sheed. We got Steed. It's hard to keep track, you know? Gonna roll out right once again. Pretty easy for us right here. That offensive line is playing super well. I'm gonna stay wide right now because it's working so well. First and 10. Simonson? Beautiful. There is a delayed blitz off that left side. Rebuilding Duke's offensive line was the best thing we ever did. I mean, remember that Texas Tech game when we were just getting bulldozed? We have come so far from then. Gonna look for Steed on the deep corner route play action. He's not there. I gotta step up. I'll take the sack there. I think I throw an interception virtually anywhere on that play. Don't forget Javier Borrell coming off of an almost a thousand yard season. He's looked like a stud. We'll give him a handoff there, make this third and seven, and hopefully we can convert. I don't see how Simonson doesn't catch this for big yards. Beautiful. Yeah, that was just a weird defense. Looked too easy. Gonna go inside zone split to Javier Borrell here. Let's just follow our blocks. Looking good, Borrell. Seven yards. Second and three. If it ain't broke, go fix it. Same exact play. Maybe it is broke. Shepley comes in. No, that was Hayden action. I think we need to go I formation and get this on the edge. Third and two. Texas is in a goal line set. We've got the fullback Shaw in. Javier Borrell to the left side. Big linebacker comes down hot. Fourth and inches. I'm going ISO up the middle. We built this offensive lineup for this exact reason. In the college football playoffs, Borrell is going to truck through. Huge touchdown for Duke. That was a little scary, but a very big play. It's seven to zero. They're bringing me in on third down. And who could forget Bradley Henson, now a junior with absurd speed. And off the edge comes Carl Teague. I don't even think Texas can get a field goal on that, did they? They didn't even get a field goal. It's 7-0 right now. It's third and three, though. I gotta pick this up. I'm gonna step up in this pocket with Kamalette. We're gonna get dragged down from behind. Oh my gosh, coach is having us go for this. I was gonna say the Sim is gonna just get rid of this, but they're not. I trust Javier Borrell here. Fourth and two, 91 overall halfback. We just gotta get to the second level. Oh, he breaks the tackle. I was about to say that did not look very good. Third and two, we're going jet touch pass to our tight end, Ty Simonson. This is crazy work, but it will work for a lot of yards, Simonson. I'm a psycho. I almost stayed up there. All right, first and 10, what do we got here? Stepping up with Kamalette. Extender breaks one. We can't break the second. Second and 14. Let's go mesh spot. I'm gonna send Simonson into the seam because I think that's zone. Oh, it is. Kamalette's got room and we've got an easy throw if we want it. Wait, why? Come down, Simonson. Ooh. That's a hot one. Oh, that was gorgeous. Ty Simonson is having a game right now for Duke. Texas still can't put up any points. It's 0-14. to 14. I'm looking for Steed right now, honestly. 
I'm going to step up here with Kamalette. He's got so much room. First and 10. Offense is absolutely cooking right now. We're going to go Javier Borrell on the outside shoulder. Everything we're doing is working right now. Everything. We're going shuffle slot curls. Interesting play call here, but I want to try it. We got a delayed blitz off the right side. Kamalette's going to get to step up. I'm going to truck. Scary business. Just asking to fumble doing that. Our first playoff game is going incredibly though. Oh, we're going to have the corner strike, but I'm not going to have any time. That's a hot one. Texas sent a screamer. All right, Burrell, you were built for this, buddy. Let's go get that first. He does. Now we can come back to corner strike. Dude, Steed is like an 88 overall blocking tight end already. Let's block him. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Can I get this off? Oh my God. You're lying. Javier Colomet. Dog, what is that throw? Going return play action flood. Kind of taking an end zone shot here, and I don't have a lot of time. I'm throwing it. Oh my god, that's open Steed! He's a blocking tight end, not a catching tight end. That had a chance, though. It really did. I'm gonna loft this up and over. Wow, that was a sick play. That was very greedy, too. I could have just taken my field goal. Shit. Oh my god, and just like that, it's 14-7. to 7. Texas has the ball, and they're in the red zone. What happened at half? Jet touch pass. Oh, it's a power. It's a power option to the quarterback. All right. I'm going to hop on Mick Prescott. Oh, what a shot, but it's a play action. Shit. Huge hit, third inches. I thought that was a handoff for sure. All right, we're sending a big blitz here. I got to get on Fiala in case this is a run, too. Third and inches. It is a run! Bodies! No, he got that? What a fight by the running back. I thought for sure we stopped him there. Can we make a stop here, boys? It's got to be a handoff. I know Texas. First and goal. It's not. Get there! No way we let him catch that. All right, this is a scary formation. Could be a run. I'm on Fiala, one of our best safeties. Oh, no. Just a handoff right up the middle? Where is he going? No vision on that running back. Heath Rambo just sold. Or no, that's their kicker. Whatever. Whoever the running back is just sold. Third and goal. This is what we got Henson for, baby. Henson is so good in this scenario. He's so fast. Quarterback's gonna take off. He's dragged down at the two. And they're going for this. Texas is going for it. Needs two yards. I'm on Bradley Henson. I'm run committing middle. They're going. Bradley Henson. There's no way. I just rocked Texas's running back on the two and he ate that hit. That was such a good play from an 87 overall middle linebacker. Luckily, we score a touchdown in the sim. It's third and four. 21 to 14. Scary, scary business. There's a wide open receiver. Deja vu, anyone? We are back in the same scenario. First and goal. I can't let him run the football. No inside zone. Oh shit, jet touch pass. Oh, we're there! Not this time! Huge hit out of speed. Second and goal, I do not expect a run here. They could. Play action. Bagged. So bagged! Carl Teague, another sack. Duke defense coming up gigantic right now. Obvious passing scenario. Let's be ready. Oh, he doesn't have anything. He's gonna take off here. That's fine. He's gotta, he's gotta go down. They gotta kick this field goal. Third and two. We can put the game away here. I'm going inside zone. Javier Borrell. Kid was born for this moment. Absolutely born for it. Take an angle, Borrell. Wear and tear is getting him, but that's 20 rushes, 104 yards. He's gonna be gassed for our next playoff game. But all we need is a touchdown here and we can all but seal this game up. First and 10. How do we like this? Ooh, that's not Borrell. It's a Amaro. It'll take us down to the two. Beautiful work. No need to complicate this play here. Javier Borrell dropped it. He's a receiving back. He dropped that? It doesn't matter. We got a beautiful offensive line for a reason. Second and goal, two yards to go. Give me a push. Borrell got his touchdown either way, but that was... I can't believe he dropped that. It's 20 to 28. Just got to hang on to this football and get this clock out of here. This play has been so money all day long. They cannot guard Borrell on this. Let's switch it up though. We'll go return play action flood. Oh my god, dude, you're out of your mind. Javier Colomet can make any throw on the run. This guy's insane. That's ball game. He just sealed the game with that throw right there. Texas has one timeout left, so technically the game is not over. We're just gonna go handoff here to Hayden. Second and five, a Javier Borrell first down. 
Oh my god, he's almost gonna get a touchdown out of it. That's ball game. Javier Borrell absolutely deserves player of the game for Duke. Dude is cooking. And 28 to 20, we get our redemption against Texas and we move on in the college football playoffs. Honestly, a really solid game for us there. Borrell absolutely deserves it. 28 to 20, Duke moves on. What a beautiful thing to see. Quarterfinal playoff game winner. All right, let's see what this next week looks like. Carl Teague, absolutely. Dude, he was so good today. Two sacks, four tackles, three TFOs. He also got National Defense Player of the Week. Granted, there's only like five or six games. Oh, oh my God, we're going through the gauntlet. Texas into Oregon. All right, the Orange Bowl is against Oregon. I mean, it was either Oregon, Iowa, or Michigan. It is what it is. We got to get another win. Yeah, Oregon is an 89 overall, even scarier than Texas. Wish us luck, boys. The Orange Bowl. The Duke Blue Devils rebuild has honestly been one of my favorite rebuilds I've ever done right out the gates. Duke was outperforming. We got our program up to a three and a half star quickly. We recruited a five star demon, Javier Calumet. And in his junior season right now, Duke's got a chance to win the national championship. But there's one game standing between us and the Natty. And it's got Oregon Ducks written all over it. They're an 89 overall. The stadium is packed. There's blue and white and there's green and yellow. Duke is seventh in the nation at 11 and three. We're third in the nation at 12 and two. The Orange Bowl should be an absolute heater, gentlemen. Now, before I go anywhere, I didn't scout Oregon yet. I gotta see this depth chart. What do they have? They've got a 99 overall quarterback, Tim Ha. This fucking guy's name is Tim Ha and he's a sophomore? What are you smoking? You're a 98 overall sophomore? Their backup's an 88. Oh my God. This dude has 99 short accuracy, 97 deep, 99 throw on the run, 96. Oh my God. That's unbelievable. I've never seen that. Their halfback's nothing too crazy. Wide receivers, they've got some speed demons for sure. Tight ends look good. Offensive line is monstrous. This is an absolutely horrifying roster. Duke strikes first. 14 to 0, 14 to 7. I gotta watch this. This game is happening way too fast. Oh my God, it's fourth and one. Oregon's going for it. Wait, this is massive. Oh, beautiful play call. Beautiful play call. It's 14 to 7 so quick. Top of the second quarter. And Tim Ha and that 98 overall are moving down the field. Third and two. There's a handoff Oregon. We got a chance for a big fourth down. And we're going to get it fourth and four. Oregon's taking the field goal. They went for it last time on fourth. This time they'll concede. It's a 41 yarder from the right hash. Should not be a difficult field goal. And it ain't. Oregon's gonna make this game 14 to 10. Calumet hands off to Javier Borrell. Seven rushes, 43 yards. On second and five, it's another handoff. We are pounding the rock. Borrell makes that third and three. I gotta see them pass though. We don't have such a dog quarterback to not pass, right? He's gonna check this down, barely gets it off. That's gonna be a punt. After some back and forth scoring, there's 50 seconds left in the second quarter, 21 to 20, as we throw a laser over the middle. We got the Javiers in the backfield. Javier Borrell, Javier Calmelet. Quarterback's looking real good right now as we have a narrow lead over Oregon. This is gonna be scary though. First and 10, big shot. Same receiver, but this one's dropped. 15 can't haul it down. Second and 10, Duke Blue Devils. Looking to get on the two-minute drill. 15 is the guy right now. Taking shots, but coming down with it. We got 30 seconds here. Timeout Duke. 21 to 20. Oh my God, 15 is everywhere right now. What a massive play for Duke right before halftime. Joseph Sheed, the senior. Three giant catches and probably 70 yards and a touchdown on that drive alone. Putting Duke on top. It's 28 to 20 and Oregon is punting the football away after half. If we can put together a good drive here and get a field goal, two possession lead for Duke. But damn, that Oregon D-line is not messing around. Second and 10. Another run is shocking after we got completely blown up last time. Got blown up on both those run plays. Just a worthless execution on that. Third and 11, we gotta be passing here. Motion our running back out. Kamalet! Oh my God, it's Joseph Sheet again, but he drops it this time. We're putting the ball right back to Oregon. So they got a field goal and a touchdown. They went for two and did not get the two-point conversion. That's how they have 29 points right now as Kalmalet is going to take off and slide down for third and inches. Don't forget he's a scrambler. We're in Wildcat. I repeat, we are in Wildcat. Third and inches, Wildcat, jumbo read option. What the fuck are we calling? You need an inch. Pitiful play calling. 
absolutely pitiful. You need an inch and you're gonna go shotgun wildcat? How about QB sneak? How about insights? How about anything but that? Hey, Oregon's making the same mistake because guess what? We're on the same playbooks. Second and 14. We've got him backed up. A safety would actually give us the lead here. It's gonna check down again. Now third and 10. One more big stop. We get the ball back with good field position. This is crucial that we get a stop here on third and 10. Carl Teague, I need you. Pressure! The defensive line came up gigantic there. Fourth and 10. Oregon's gotta punt this football away. It's a bad punt. It's a really bad punt. We've got blockers. We are virtually in field goal range already. 28 to 29, Kalmalet breaks the sack and almost made that throw. That was psycho business. Gold tier extender is proven to be really, really good. Second and 10, Kalmalet, similar play. Checks down to the opposite side to Ty Simonson, third and five. We are, I don't think this is field goal range. Depends how good our kicker is. The 51 yard field goal, third and five. We need a little bit of something here. Kalmalet. Finds him caught! Massive play right there, first and 10. We're almost in a position to start chewing this clock, kicking a field goal and winning the ball game, first and 10. Kalmalet. Kalmalet! You can't let that happen. We are backed up now to a similar looking field goal. Second and 16, Kalmalet, five wide, find the open man, he does. It's our blocking tight end who's out of bounds at third and 13. At least we're in field goal range right now. I don't know if we take a shot here. Let's see what Kalmalet is thinking. Third and 13, it's a slip screen? You guys are psychos! And it's gonna work! That's not even Borel, that's a backup! Oh my god. That was one of the most psycho play calls I've ever seen, and it's paying off huge for the Blue Devils right now. Kalmalat fires middle! He's down to the two-yard line. We're not using the clock, though. This is so weird to me. I'd be chewing this clock. It's gonna be another handoff to the backup. I don't know where Javier Borel is. He must be hurt. I cannot believe it. Javier Borel got us here, and he's injured in this game, I think. It's 34 to 29. Looking for a two-point conversion to make this a seven-point ball game 34 29 there's the laser to another backup running back he caught it 36 to 29 a huge drive touchdown and two-point conversion for duke we gotta hold oregon for two more minutes with a great stop right there tim ha laser beam is caught and you're fast as shit oh my god my linebacker got dusted there oregon looks like they're gonna score quick i mean if they score too quick we can score ourselves right Throws a check down here. Henson's on top of it. Bradley Henson, we love him. Second and one, honestly, let's get a sack, bro. We gotta slow him down. Bradley Henson almost just had a game-winning INT. Third and one, Oregon still in five wide. Something tells me they're gonna score a touchdown right here, dude. I do not like how this looks. Dude, I'm a mind reader. I knew they'd score the touchdown right there. Yikes. The good news is it's all tied up. We've got the football. We've got three timeouts. We gotta get in field goal range. 36 to 36. Let's see how the blocks look on this return. We'll start at the 21. Javier Kalmalet is taking off? Slide! Oh my God, that was scary. I did not like that. First and 10. Looking fast as hell though. Gotta get us out to about the 35 on the other side. So we got about 20 yards to go to be in field goal range. Kalmalet! Oh my God, is he speed boosting? Holy shit, what was that? Dude just hit the nitrous button. Second and three. Kalmalet using his legs more than I've ever seen him. He's gonna throw the check down. Simonson gets rocked and can't catch it. That brings up third and three. I think you have to go for this if we don't get it. Kalmalet! This dude is a scrambling demon right now. He's completely saving the game with his legs. Gotta give it to the O-line though, holding that incredibly scary D-line. First and 10, Kalmalet. Flushed out, throws the check down, caught. We have no Javier Borrell, dude. We are literally subbing in random running backs. We have had three different running backs in on the last four plays. Second and two for the first time. Five sacks for Oregon, zero for Duke. Third and nine. It's a gigantic conversion here for Kalmalet. And he makes it, it's caught. It was Joseph Sheed again. You gotta hand this ball off. We're in field goal range, aren't we? Maybe not. I can't tell what we're doing here. Maybe a jet touch pass. A zone fake jet. Timeout Oregon. Looks like we are gearing up for a deep game winning field goal. There's the handoff. Dude, I miss Javier Borrell. He must have gotten injured. He's been out all game. That is such a big blow to this team. Third and 10, 36 to 36. One final handoff gives us maybe two yards. And we're gonna trot out the kicker. This is a deep ass field goal. I don't like this. It's a 51 yard field goal, right hash. Fourth and eight to send us. Oh my God. The game is not over though. The game is not over. That is a gigantic field goal, especially in college football, 39 to 36. 
Oregon's got a timeout in 23 seconds to get in field goal range themselves. Best case scenario, any pass caught behind the first down or a sack or an interception. Oh my God, we could have came down with that. Second and 10, 39 to 36, Oregon. Carl T, get home. Throws quick, breaks a tackle. Oregon's gotta use their timeout. Okay, that's really good that they use that timeout though. It's gonna be so difficult for them to set up a field goal. They're pretty much in Hail Mary. They want the touchdown. What the fuck? Oh my God, I hate the sim logic in this game. It's so bad. No matter what game it is, it's always made by EA, buddy. But why on earth would we be ever be in press single cover man with the game on the line? You should be shaded over top. You should be in prevent with nine seconds left and no timeouts. And my sim defense decides to run Press man coverage. Up by three with nine seconds left. This game's over. And that, for the record, is why it's so incredibly difficult to win a national championship on sim without actually inputting any of your own, any of your own plays or any of your own input because it is ridiculous that any coach in any scenario would run press man coverage uh, in that scenario. In fact, I've seen it happen in an NFL game, though. I'm so pissed off at that because we... We executed such a good game plan. Everyone played so well. The only reason we lost the game is because of a dog shit simulation logic that doesn't know how to play call based on the scenario. I mean, why would you ever run that? So here's the game winning play here. Um, coach decides to run cover one man with single cover press man, except he doesn't even press it. All he does is turn on his hips pressed at the one yard line. I mean, this it's almost like the game just decided that maybe we should have Oregon win instead. That's all this is. What the fuck is this? Very silly. That's so frustrating. And we were so, so close to head into the national championship. A 12 and three fifth ranked in the nation season for Duke is pretty awesome. So I can only be so mad, but um, damn. It makes me wish I had just stepped in and called prevent for them. Javier Comelet, 3,500 yards, 32 and nine to close out his junior season. A really, really good season. Joseph Sheed ends with a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns. And Javier Borrell ends with a thousand one hundred yards, 12 touchdowns. And interestingly, he's not injured. So why the hell was Javier Borrell out? Was it wear and tear? Dude must be fatigued. Oh shit, would you look at that? Javier Borrell, severe risk of injury, minus 16 break tackle, minus 11 speed. He is beat up. A really sour end to the season. Let's see if the senior season for Javier Camelette can be a turnaround. It is senior season for some of our best players ever, gentlemen. Let's take a look. Javier Borrell, 94 overall with safety valve recoup and fan favorite, 90 speed, 91 excel. Javier Camelette, the Javiers. Magician, mobile resistance, option king, extender and off platform. He's an 88 overall. He never got the speed upgrade. I am pretty sad about that, but he did get an Excel upgrade and his throwing stats got really, really good. Kalmalette, 95 throw power, 95 agility, 91 break sack, 94 change of direction. 80s and 90s in his throw stats. Dude's an absolute dog. And we got two insane sophomores, Desmond Steed and Jonathan Naylor. Free safety, 92 speed, 91 Excel. Henson's coming into his senior year. Mario Butts in his senior year. Wayne Reynoso, I mean, it's an 85 overall team. It's one of the highest overalls we've had Duke at yet. Jeremiah Davis with platinum tier layout and 98 speed. We got a lot of speed in this wide receiver room. 98, 95, 96. I mean, it's a damn good team, man. But I am so frustrated about last season. We're number nine in the nation. Got a tough schedule. Clemson, Florida on here. Iowa, let's see what we can do. Dude, we're a nasty overall and we're a four-star program now. But we just went seven to five in Kamalet's senior season. That is so frustrating. Dude, I felt like I put this team in the exact position exactly where I wanted them. Kamalet actually had a ridiculous, ridiculous senior season. 3,000 yards on 30 and two. Could almost be a Heisman season. Borrell does 9, 14 and 12. Kamalet 401 on the ground. 38 broken tackles for Javier Borrell. Dude has got to be one of the best running backs in the league. Receiving really well spread out as far as throwing the football. And then defensively, we had nine and a half sacks out of Wayne, seven out of Steed, and three interceptions from Bradley Henson in his senior season, and three interceptions from Terrell Castile in his sophomore season. Oh, I'm really frustrated. Now, that being said, we did put together a really, really good roster of recruits. So many four stars. 
Left end, athlete, left end, halfback, right guard, outside linebacker, tackles, middle linebackers, wide receivers. One of the best recruiting classes we've ever put together. That certainly has to do with the fact that we are a four-star program now. But I am so demoralized. I loved this roster more than I probably loved any roster I put together. Borel Kamalet was the dynamic duo. Jeremiah Davis with his platinum tier layup. Bradley Henson, once a 71 overall freshman. Freshman middle linebacker has started every year at Duke. 91 speed, 88 XL. Like, I just feel like I have such a strong association with this roster. Adrian Pounds, man. And uh, that horrendous play call last season. It's got me sad. Frankly, I think I did everything I could to put Duke in the right spot. We just got really unlucky. I'm gonna sim a few seasons on autopilot, see what kind of position we really put this team in, and we'll go from there. Roster is at 86 overall, 87 defense in this next season. Best play is Jermaine Scroggins, who got insanely good in the offseason. Who's our quarterback, though? Larry Trinidad. Improviser with Platinum Mobile Deadeye. Low-key a dog. E Yikes. This is our worst season since I took over. Full autopilot season after losing... Kamalet, five and seven, two and six in the ACC, and we regress to a three and a half star program. Desmond Steed is now a 93 overall with platinum tier pocket shield. That guy is ridiculous, I will say that. Trinidad sucked. Oh my God, he sucked. 19, he threw more interceptions than touchdowns. Amaro was mediocre. We got an insane amount of interceptions this season. Now I do wanna see if, did we get any Duke records with any of our players? Something tells me that we might have gotten a record. Okay, so we have no career records, which I'm actually kind of shocked by. I thought this is what we might get. Any season records for the ACC? How about any game records for the ACC? So no ACC records. What about Duke themselves? What about a Duke record? Javier Camalette, 502 passing yards in 2028. He has the single game record. Sean Boudreau with 1,500 receiving yards is a Duke season record. And Camalette has Duke's passing yards or career record he actually came 400 yards short of the ACC record. He also has the passing touchdowns record. And don't forget about Kobe Smith. Kobe Smith was that insane D lineman. He now has Duke's career sack record with 25. Gentlemen, we made one hell of a run with Duke. And I know we didn't win the national championship, but that was so much fun rebuilding those players, bringing that team that close. But honestly, I'm a little bit too pissed off to continue because there's no way I'm about to do another four hours and then have the computer AI I run the worst play call ever. All right, Ray Parker is retiring from college football after a hell of a career. I hope you boys enjoyed the Duke rebuild. It was so much fun. This is really one of my most, this is one of my favorite rebuilds. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.